Hello everyone, welcome to another video. Um, in today's video, I would like to, well, create Thor's hammer with you. Um, so yeah, this is going to be the, the beginning of a new series, um, both presumably in the process of creating Thor's hammer, because I doubt I can get it finished in one video without it being an unappeasing length of time in terms of how long the video is, and I do want people to watch it. Um, but also, in terms of, I'm going to be doing more and more of this based by example uh, style of video. So, um, I, I have already modeled uh, Thor's hammer and Thor's hammer in a slightly more lightning fashion. Um, the, the modeling isn't part of this because, honestly, just I, I don't feel comfortable modeling. I'm not good at modeling, in my opinion. Like, obviously, I'm not the worst, but... They are people who do it significantly better. Um, so yeah, basically, I'm going to be making Thor's hammer, making it fully functional. Like you can throw it, and you can summon lightning, and you can, you know, loads of cool stuff. Um, uh, sound effects, everything, and uh, yeah, should be really cool. Uh, and I'm I'm gonna be doing more videos like this. Like I create a system and explain every step of it, explain how you can do it too. If, if you want to just watch to see the cool product being made and don't actually care about doing it yourself as well, then, I mean, that's also fine, of course. Um, but yeah, um, I, I, I put quite a lot of work into this already, not even just the models. I mean, I've built this entire room for no reason. Um, I, I've, I've set up loads of camera angles, like I can put you there, I can put you over there, I can put you over there, I, I can put you right there, you know, yeah, you know. <laughs> is it a bit extensive to do it like this? <laughs> yes, it is. Did I spend hours upon hours on that model when it is only visible in one angle? Uh, yes, I did. I really need to get better at this. But yeah, anyhow, all that's left to do is really kind of explain what, I, what I'm thinking of uh, making. Because, well, I mean, obviously, I, I want to make Thor's hammer. But uh, what abilities, what triggers, kind of plan it all out a bit. Um, and then, yeah, I guess just, uh, get going with it. Um, yeah, I, uh, hope you enjoy. If you do, leave a like. Um, or, or, or not. Your choice. Uh, yeah, hope you enjoy, and, uh, yeah, let's get started on it. Alright, so before we actually get going on planning out Thor's hammer and what kind of abilities it should have, um, well, first of all, if you just want to watch me, uh, make something cool, um, obviously you can just do that. Um, but if you want to follow along, um, then for the coding, I highly recommend, uh, downloading the, the editor called Visual Studio Code. Um, link for that in the description. Um, you can also download the starting point and the resource pack and... The thing that I have at the end of the video. So if you don't want to code along but just see how the end product actually looks, then I mean you can also do that. If you would love to follow along but are like I don't know how to code, uh, I have made quite a few tutorial videos on that in the past, just explaining how to use the the essential commands for this. So that being um, execute, scoreboard, tag, and teleport. Uh, I have videos on all four of those already. Um, get it? Link in the description. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, if you if you want to watch that first, or first want to watch me make this and then see whether or not it is something that you enjoy, once again, all fine. Um, but yeah, uh, with that all out of the way, I uh, I hope you enjoy, and let's uh, let's get to planning. All right. So obviously. This section is just, hey, download Video Studio Code. You know, all of that I just mentioned. Um, all right. So, what should Thor's hammer actually do, right? Um, well, two things, in, in my opinion. Um, and maybe I'll add more because I'm like, you know what? I want to add more because I'm an idiot. Um... But for now, this this is what I what I want to make. Um, so I want to detect when you get a kill. Um, 
obviously only when you're holding the weapon. Um, and then I want to change out the weapon to be lightningified, you know. Um, so it uses a different model and it deals a good amount more damage. Um, the different model is the, the lightning. One. I feel like that went without saying. Um, but yeah, so just if you get a kill, you are going to deal more damage for an amount of time. And it'll look cool. Um, then you can also throw the hammer, because that, I mean, obviously, that's kind of the whole point of it. Um, so yeah, well, th thrown, what I, what I really want is that you don't actually have it anymore. So you throw it. And then it comes back to you, and then you know. You you once it comes back to you, you can use it again. Um, yeah. Beyond that, I would like custom sound effects. I don't know whether I'll do that this video or in a different video. I don't know how long this will take. Um, and if it hits an object, just summon a lightning bolt. Really, quite simple. Um, and when you lay it out like this. It, it 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 could take 20 minutes to code, you know? That that that, that, that is an option, hopefully. Um but yeah, let's um uh, let's actually uh, get started now on actually coding the thing, shall we? Alright. So I have well honestly I've copy pasted my template. Um I, I wrote a script which just generates this for me. Um yeah, I, I've copy pasted this in. Um, this whole data pack. Um, also, if you want the, the starting point, it is also in the description. Check out the description. There's quite a lot there, presumably. And I'm going to hate writing everything down because I am one to forget. Um, right. So, first of all, th this is just the basic structure. You have a load function, which runs once when you join the world. Um, or, or when you start up the server, or anything like that. And what you would put in here is anything that you want to run once. So if you want to initiate anything, you put it in there. Then you have a pick. This runs 20 times a second in general. And this says, hey, as every single player at their position, run player. And this just runs as every player at their position and does every single one of the commands in here. Um, now what I would also like to make is a new function called give.mc function. So this is going to give the weapon because I cannot be bothered to make a custom crafting recipe because it's not, yeah, it, custom crafting is a pain and it doesn't really function that easily. Um, so yeah, just doing this is what I generally do, um, either just as a, as a, placeholder of, hey, for now, I have a give command and it all works. Um, and generally, I just leave it into the data pack and people seem to appreciate it because you can get it in creative mode without having to do anything. Um, but yeah, now what I want to get started on is just kind of the, the basics of giving myself the weapon. So that is going to have to be done. Um, and I want to then also detect the weapon and detect kills. So I'll really quickly get started on giving myself the weapon because that is a very long command and I cannot be bothered to do it uh, live on camera. Um, there is a generator down below in the description called MC Stacker. It is amazing and while I do know some of the basic things or values that you should give, uh, it, with the more complicated things like attributes, uh, it uh, really comes in handy. But yeah, let's uh, really quickly write out this give command and uh, then we'll get started. All right, so I used the, the, the generator. Let me actually uh, show it really quickly to uh, create a give command. Um, so yeah, I said that it should be a warp fungus on stick and that it should have a name of Thor's hammer with the color of red, with no italic, and it should have some text below the name saying worthy of a god because, I don't know, Thor's hammer and all that. 
which is gray, which is non-metallic, and it should not be able to be broken because, uh, yeah. Um, then this is interesting because this is the custom model data, and that specifies which custom model you kind of want to use. A um, bit more complicated than that, but that that's how we're doing it. So if you have this number, then you get Thor's hammer. If you have that number, then you get the, the lightning version. Um, and this is nothing right now. Um, then you have hide flags, which is which things do you want to not be visible on the item? And that's, uh, well, that's unbreakable. I didn't want the unbreakable text to be visible because that's ugly. Um, yeah. But then this is where it, uh, you get to the stage of where I don't know how it's supposed to be written. So, uh, yeah. Basically, these are the attributes. So, when it is in your main hand, you get 10 more half hearts. Um, you deal 10 more attack damage. So, you deal 10 attack damage. And this is because it's a, a warp fungus on a stick, which is basically spam clicking. So negative three makes it so that it is slower than an axe, basically. Um, so yeah, that's kind of all that there is to it. And then here you have your outputs and you just copy paste that over to here. Um, so yeah, now I have my item, um, really cool. But now I, I need to get do more setup things because, well, I want to detect some actions, right? Um, but first of all, I would like a temp value, right? Add temp. Um, and in there, um, like I've explained in the, the scoreboard tutorial, uh, in this is where I just, I'm going to store temp values. So if there's any value that I want to remember for one tick or for one player, just until the, the next player gets picked, well, for that brief moment in time, I'll have a value in there for that. And that's really useful for optimization purposes. Um, and while I'm not going to constantly explain why things are better, um, I am going to teach you, the, 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 to my knowledge, the best way of doing things. Um, so yeah, then obviously I want to detect right clicking. Um, and like I explained in scoreboard again, um, our focus on a stick is perfect for that. Because when you right click while on a strider, you boost, um, and that is detectable. However, it's also just detectable in general um, because of a bug. Um, so, and that's really nice. So I'm just going to call this warp fungus on a stick. And this would be a minecraft.use because you use an item. And then that would be a minecraft colon, or fungus on a stick. And th this would work, right? It would just work. However, if someone else would happen to also make a data pack, then they would have the same name, and it would interfere with one another. And <laughs> you think our fungus on a stick is a generic name? It's very temp. Um, so yeah. In order to make it a bit more unique, I'm going to add a prefix. Just some bit of text in front of the name. That is Thor's hammer dot. And I'm going to add that in front of every single name. Because, well, obviously, I need it in front of every single name. Um, but yeah, beyond that, I also want to... Um, I, I can actually pull it up again. Um, I want to also detect skills. So I need some, some scoreboard, because that's how you generally detect actions, um, to detect kills. So the thing is, that is actually two objectives. You have one for mob kills and one for player kills, but I want them both to, to activate my thing, right? So mob kills is minecraft.custom, where all the interesting ones are. Like, you see, breeding animals, uh, climbing on ladders, um, dealing damage, catching fish, flying, you know, interesting things. Um, yeah, here is just mob kills. I feel like it's pretty obvious what that does. And there's also player kills. Right. 
So now I have these scoreboards, which will just increase by one every time that I get a player or mob kill. Um, right. So now, now, now that I have these objectives all made, um, well, I, I want to start using them. More specifically, I want to start with the uh, mob kills because it's easier. Uh, but yeah, so inside a player, because for every single player do this, and I want to detect it for every single player. So first of all, well, I want to, because right now, it is just a counter for every time you get a mob kill. Um, and that's nice for statistics and stuff, but, you know, I don't want you get, uh, I don't want you to get one mob kill and then forever to just have a lightning version. You know, that that's not what I want. So every single tick, it sets the value to zero. And before then, I can say, hey, execute if the value. So I execute if score ls mob kills matches one or above run uh, function electrify slash check. So electrify is going to be a folder. Uh, I can click here to create it. Um, and I'm first going to run check. Because what I now know is because you, you might think, okay, so now I know that I have mob kill, you know, all good. Now I can electrify it. But that's not actually all that needs doing because while this is all cool and all, I don't actually know what item I use to get a mob kill. Um, and there's actually nothing unique about this item. Nothing at all. And that's kind of a problem. So what I'm going to add is a Thor's Hammer 1B in front of it. So now, now I store in the item, just like the name and the text underneath and the attributes, I also have a value which does nothing normally, nothing at all, but is stored in the item, making it unique. And this is what I'm going to detect to say, hey, are you actually Thor's hammer? Um, you might think that that's all good now, but obviously I also need to detect player kills, right? And I could say, well, okay, well, then I also do player kills. But that, I want to make it a bit fancier. And instead say, hey, scoreboard players, operation. And I'm just going to make a set the value of a new player called dollar kills, so it's not a real player, fake player, like explained, and I'm, I'm really starting to repeat myself, huh? Uh, yeah, but that's a temporary value because it is just for this player, and any other player has a different value. But yeah, that is equal to my mob kills, right? And now, now nothing has changed, really. Um, but now I can say it is equal to itself, Plus my player kills. And now if I can say, hey, if this player, which is a fake player, has a value of one or above, then check whether or not I am holding my weapon. Um, so yeah, that's really nice, really simple. Um, the thing also, the reason that I'm not here detecting, hey, you know, uh, if holding weapon check, you know, kills. If the reason I'm not doing the other way around um, is because it's actually kind of laggy to see what uh, your MPT data, right? MPT data is, is, is one of the laggier aspects of data packing. So you want to minimize it as much as you can. So now the only times I'm ever checking what item you're holding is when you get a kill, or later on, also if you right click, or you know, if you have stuff like that. Um, but yeah, it uh, should make it a lot better. Um, and I mean, I can also immediately um, say, hey, if the score of at s for rock fungus on a stick matches on a rough, so I right click, then do throwing. Check and then obviously I also need to say 
that it gets to, to, to zero again. So yeah, this is all good now. Um, assuming that I didn't make a mistake somewhere. Um, but I really quickly want to test some stuff, right? Make sure that these functions actually get called. So here I'm saying, hey, you got a kill. And here I'm going to do, say, hey, you right click. And now let's actually go into the game and see whether or not that works. So I, I figured out there's actually a typo here. Right there, that's supposed to be a dot. Um, that, that broke everything. Yeah, that, that's, it's fine, it's fine. Alright, so now with that one typo fixed, and, uh, well, after running slash reload to, uh, run every function again, you know, do the slash load function, refresh everything. Now, if I right click, you can see, hey, you right clicked. And if I switch to this angle, go over here and summon pig. Then uh, I've got a pig, and now if I actually can hit my shots, then you can see, hey, you got a kill. Uh, let's place that there. Um, so yeah. I That's basically all that there is to it. Uh, so far, what we've done all works. All right. So it said you got a kill in chat, so that's all good. But obviously, it would have done that even if I would have killed it with another right sword. It didn't care what I used. Um, so yeah, that's what we're going to do now. Um, so it should only do this and, and, and make the electrified version if I actually have a non-electrified version at the moment, right? So the electrified version is cool and all that, but right now I should not have that. So if I say, you know, execute, if... You know, and then, then there's going to be some check. Uh, actually, you know, uh, execute if holding thing, then run function of thought hammer elect refi slash activate, right? Um, but I mean, here holding thing that that's obviously not what I want, and I could, you know, execute if. Data entity at s selected item dot tag dot stores, but that's a bit um bit meh. So what I'm instead going to do is store the result of the command into a score of stores hammer in temp. Let's actually make this in is Thor's hammer, just so it's a bit neater. Um, and here is where the fun is going to get, and that's using data command. So just data get entity at s. My selected item, my tag, um, is on there, then obviously, what did I name it again? Thor's hammer with a capital letter. So now this value, that's going to get out of that command is going to get stored into this score. Right? So now what I can do is instead of saying if holding thing, I can say, hey, if score is Thor's hammer of that matches some value, right? Because the number that I gave here, 1B, is now the value of this scoreboard. So it's zero if it's not Thor's hammer, or even if you're not holding anything, it becomes zero. And if you are holding Thor's hammer, then it becomes the number that was given. So the normal Thor's hammer is going to be one, and the electrified version is going to have a value of two. And then I can distinguish between one and the other. Um, but yeah. Now let's really quickly make this function. Um, and here I can say, Hi, you are getting electrified. You know, I'm not quite sure if I've been spelling that right, but I well and truly do not care. Um, yeah, let's let me really quickly check that all of that works. I'm not going to bore you with every single check and being functional and stuff. I'll just say if it went right or wrong. Um, 
So yeah, let's let me really quickly check and then uh, we can uh, continue. All right, so this all works perfectly. Um, I had the slight issue of um, I still had a hammer from before I added the tag, um, but there's nothing actually wrote, uh, wrong with the code. Um, right. So now all that I need to do here is change the weapon in my main hand, right? And I'm going to use the slash item command for that, like I mentioned. Um, and I can say item replace entity at s uh, weapon dot main hand with and then here say a, a warp fungus on a stick with all of the values, right? And I would just be uh, copy pasting this. And that works brilliantly. The one thing that I have that, that you know, that, that I am like, with that is that if you rename your hammer, you know, it, it has a different name. But anytime that you do this, it forces this name again, right? And that, I'm, I'm personally not that big of a fan, but this is the easiest method. Um, and I have used this in the past. What I generally do now is get into something more fun. That's item modifiers. So beyond that, it, it's still the same. Um, and then all that you have to do here is specify that. And then now basically what this is, is going to have a list of modifiers. Um, so it's going to modify the item in my main hand to have different values. Um, but obviously there's no folder here, uh, uh, no folder, no files, nothing. Um, so I need to just uh, really quickly create it. And now you can see there is a folder right here. And I, I can even just uh, go right there. So here is a, so far the, the regenerated stuff here is a set count which allows you to change the amount of items in your hand and while that is cool it's not actually what I want so I can move that and here you can see all the things that are possible um, and I think that what I want is just set mbt and then this gives an error because I need to tag and then now here I can just set the values but everything else if I remember correctly, should copy paste. So for starters, what I want in there is, well, I mean, I want to say that it, it, it is an electrified hammer. You know, it, it, it's changed. Um, beyond that, there is also the fact that it, where did they put it? Uh, there. The fact that it is actually, it actually looks like an electrified hammer, uh, that becomes two. And then last but not least, it needs to actually also be better, right? So meaning I need to do this and just copy paste all of that. Oh no. So the issue now is that there are a bunch of these symbols, which are also used to indicate where to start and stop, which uh, causes issues. So all I really need to do is say, hey, every symbol of that uh, has a backslash now. Um, and that basically just specifies, hey, this is not indicative of the starting and stopping. This is just the symbol. So yeah. Well, that is all cool and all. Um, what I have now is that it uh, has the exact same value. So now I need to just just tweak stuff a bit. Uh, this is where the damage is. Let's just say you deal four more hearts of damage because balancing. Uh, right. So now let's really quickly make sure that I don't delete the data of my item. And if I do, uh, let's really quickly add some more. Um, yeah. Right. So it did work like I thought it did. Um, and that is absolutely amazing. So now it will know that it is a second Thor hammer variant. It looks like a second storm variant, and it is a lot faster. However, it shouldn't just be able to electrify, it should also be able to deactivate it, right? So this will just 
be a deactivate.json item modifier. So this is just going to first of all say that and say that. Um, you should be three again. And you should be slightly less overpowered. Right, and that, that's all that there is to it, really simple. Except, obviously, it's not used. Um, and I could I could add it right here and say uh, deactivate. And then it just becomes lightning. And before you've ever even had it, it instantly becomes non-lightning. Um, yeah, that, not all that interesting. So what we need is a timer. Meaning... We're going back to scoreboards. So it's going to be a dummy scoreboard again. And let's just name this Lightning uh, Timer. So this will just start off with no values for anyone. But what I can say when you, it activates is scoreboard player set Lightning Timer, timer thingy to be, well, you're going to have a Lightning variant for 10 seconds. Um, so obviously, if it removes one every tick, then this is good. So yeah. But now, in here, obviously, I'm going to have this score now, uh, set to 200, but it doesn't actually do anything yet. So what I'm going to have to do here is execute if the score of at S of lighting timer matches one or above, or players remove at S and timer one. Meaning if the value of my lightning timer is one or above, remove one. And um, but before that is done, I want to actually say hey. Once it is one, so you know, 199 rotations went by. If it's one, well, then I want to check the undoing. And the reason I want to check first is because you know, I could just run this instantly, but I don't actually know whether or not the player kept the item in their hands the entire time. And if they have it in their hands, then that's great. I mean, I, I can just really quickly copy this. And I can just say, hey, if it matches two, then instead of running this whole thing, well, I only need to run mum command. No real need to make a whole new function for it. So I can just say, modify it and deactivate. But now, if you have switched away, you keep it. And that that's not what I want. So if it doesn't match, well, th th this is going to get a function. Yeah, that's for sure. So what I want to do is remove one of the, the lightning Thor hammers, if you have it. And... Yeah, I realized how there's a flaw in my system. Um, right, so before I check this, I want to also say, because basically, if you have one normal Thor's hammer, you get a kill, and then you get without a second one, get another kill. And then the timer runs out, it removes the one, and you still have one. So I want to only electrify a hammer if you haven't already electrified another hammer. Yeah. Bit annoying, but it's what I need to do. So this can be an unless. So if you don't have a value of one or above, then electrify away. Uh, right, so if you don't have it in your hand, but you did electrify one, well, then I want to get started on clearing. So, 
So what this can go ahead and do is just say, hey, execute. Result score of as scores hammer. Temp run clear at s or fungus. That's not about fungus on a stick. With a tag of first hammer to be. So basically, what this does, right? Let, let, let's go through it slowly again. Um, first of all, it says, okay, look at the item that you're holding and see if it has a tag of Thor's hammer. And if it does, then store it into this number. And if it doesn't, just store zero. And then I say, if it has a value of two, which means it's an electric hammer, then modify it to be a normal hammer because the timer right out. But if Thor's hammer is not equal to two, then that means that you're not holding it. So I don't want to run, I, I don't want to change the item that you're holding. I want to remove any occur, like I, I want to just remove your hammer, right? Um, with a max of one. So I clear the inventory of any warp fungus on a stick that has this tag. And then I store how many I removed into the item, uh, into the, not the item, into the score. So now I can run execute if score, uh, if score of Astor's hammer, 10th value, matches one, so I removed one, well then I need to be given a new one, right? So then run, give me a whole new one. But there's also a chance, and this is why I'm honestly not sure why I wanted to uh, start with changing items, um, there's also a chance to drop the item. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so then function first hammer electrify deactivate wait no undo is what I named functions undo item but I think this can wait until later because I'm just going to assume that people don't drop their hammers Bold assumption, I know, but uh, still. Um, and then I'm going to maybe do this later in this video or in a second follow-up video where I just need to make everything more neat and stuff and stuff like that. Um, yeah, let's really quickly check whether or not this all works because I did quite a lot of code without checking. So let's really quickly check. All right. So I don't really have time to add anything else. Um, so yeah, let's just make sure that this actually works and, uh, call it there for this video. Um, all right. So if I right click it, um, it still does this. I think it will for quite a while longer. Um, but if I summon, I, uh, let's actually, uh, do this. If I summon a pick over here and then have it n not walk away. I have great aim, I promise. Then you can see now it is animated and stuff. So now if I summon a new pig, um, then it does more damage. Do you take my words? Ah, and as you can see, after 10 seconds from the initial kill, I got my new normal hammer back. Very nice, very nice. All right. Let's also make sure that if I take it out of my hand, that also works. I mean, this won't look good on camera at all. Um, but, you know, it's fine. Ah, there we go. It's, uh, it's number okay. Nice, nice, that's nice. Surprisingly, no bugs. It's almost like I'm actually good at my job. Wow. Um, all right. Um, but yes, um, angles. Yes. So if you, um, uh, if you enjoyed the video, if you learned, and if you're excited for part two, um, 
leave a like and nice comments and stuff. Um, if you have a bug somewhere, if something doesn't work, um, feel free to join my Discord down below in the description and ask for help there. Um, then you can also like send over files and screenshots so that I actually can tell what's wrong because telling me that it doesn't work doesn't actually help me. Uh, <laughs> but yes, um, yeah, with all that said and done, I uh, hope you enjoyed and I will see you all next one. Goodbye, everyone.